I'm telling them that I can't breathe Clearly he don't give a damn about my plea His ancestors used to hang us on trees Today they identify as rogue police You see I'm black for that I'm a threat to America My rise is their fall and their fall is evident Blood on your hands is heavier than an elephant Open up America's class and they killing us for walking Killing us for job Welcome to my channel I'm the 20th and this is Reunite Sandy Speaks. Again, welcome to my channel. Uh, today, you guys, we're going to talk about two young black boys who are missing from their home um, and who now believe to be um, deceased. We're going to talk about Arson and Aaron West. Arson and Aaron West are two young black boys, black babies. I believe they were four and five years old. They were uh, originally taken from their home, from their biological mom, and placed into foster care and subsequently adopted by these two um, people, Trizel and Jacqueline West. Um, again, this is Reunite Sandy Speaks. Our purpose is to document the inequalities of black people in this country. One of the things I'm going to focus on is child protective services. Black men are murdered in this country, black women are harmed, and black babies are stolen for a profit by CPS. Uh, I want to um, remind you and highlight that in this country, black people are not treated equally. We are seen as um, being secondary. Some even not even want to acknowledge that we're human beings. And we are consistently discriminated against and um, oppressed. Uh, I want to bring awareness to our sin and Oren, because he's a young, two young black boys. And it's my belief that their experience, what occurred with them, has a direct relation to them being young black boys. Um, I'm not, I, I want to give you, um, from what my understanding is, um, from what my understanding and what I've, what I've read and what I've come to discover is that Orson and Oren were removed from their mom's home, from their biological mom's home, because Oren um, had an issue with his leg. Um, she, his mom came home, noticed there was something wrong with her son, and she took him to the hospital. She didn't know what was happen what happened to him, so subsequently, uh, Child Protective Services removed him from the home. What I'm to understand is that they went ahead and took his little brother, Oren, because it is Child Protective Services practice is to try to keep siblings together. Okay, you guys? And when I say that, please understand what I'm, what I'm saying to you and understand the consequence and um, the, uh, the thought process or what is actually occurring, okay? A mom came home from work, noticed something was wrong with her son, okay? So she took him to the hospital. Child Protective Services became involved, took her son, and then subsequently took her second son. And um, black people... I believe this is happening to black people. Okay? So think about what they're saying. Their practice and their procedure is to pull a second child out of the home because they think that the idea that two siblings are together in a non-biological home is more important than the second sibling being home with, his, with their parents. OK, um, I'm trying my best to stay focused and not to talk about too many topics. I want to keep you um, engaged with what I'm saying. These two young boys are, are, are dead, believed to be dead. And I believe because they're two young black boys. And um, I want to talk about Orson and Orlin, Orson and Orin. Um, as a relationship to them being young black boys. 
I am bringing them to the forefront because we are violated, we are harmed continuously in this country. And one of the main issues is that awareness is not brought about black children and black people when they're harmed. We know about Gabby Patilla, who was missing. They've done, they, they, I think they even have a um, Netflix or Hulu uh, show about Gabby Patilla. Um, they've talked about that little young girl, the, I don't even remember her name, the missing um, beauty queen, the little young girl who was missing, who, who was found dead in her home. I can't think of that child's name. I always forget that little girl's name, John Benet Ramsey. Over 25 years ago, John Benet Ramsey was found dead in her um, basement. Okay, we hear about John Benet Ramsey. They've done premiere um, TV movies, um, projects about John Benet Ramsey, about Gabby Patilla. So, what that says is that. I don't feel comfortable saying this, but what happens in this country, the, the lives of black people are not valued at the same regard as white people. If you are a black person and you're watching this video, it is my purpose to liberate black people. It's my purpose for us to finally be treated equally in this country. And in order to do so, we can't expect the other man to value us if we don't value us. They talked about Jomini Ramsey, Gabby Patilla, because there's an audience for that. There need to be an audience for Orin and Orson West. Orin and Orson West were two young black boys who were missing, who went missing from their home, from their foster home, adopted parents' home, and their two young black boys. I knew nothing about this. This has been going on, um, I believe, since 2020. I came to learn about this from a young woman. Um, her name is uh, Yaya Ansley. If I'm saying her name properly, I know her from Twitter. She is one of the um, um, leaders of a group called Secure the Tribe. They're, they're, it's a, it's Secure the Tribe, I believe, is a black reparationist group. I, I don't know if that's their main function, their primary function, but one of their goals is to um, fight for reparations, and they have concerns about black people. They discuss issues revolving around black people. Um, Yaya had uh, tweeted about these young black boys, and I said, ooh, what? I live in California. And you, as you, if you follow me, you know that I my my sentiment is California is an anti-black Jim Crow state. That California is more anti-black Jim Crow racist than any other state in this country, and they do a phenomenal job of hiding it. And a lot of you who live outside of California do not know that. That's one of one of my objectives is to shine a light on California. These two young black boys, Oren and Orson, have been missing for a couple of years now. Okay? And I want to talk about this. I want to talk about Child Protective Services. So I think it's important that we are aware of what happened to Orson and Orlin West. I'm a little troubled that uh, I feel like Child Protective, Child Protective Services put more scrutiny on the biological parent than they did the foster subsequently adoptive parents and I believe this happens more frequently amongst black people and in order and only way we can make it stop is that we as a group participate and get involved shine a light on these agencies that are harming black people um, I came across another video of another mom who had her children taken from her by Child Protective Services. Her children were placed also with Trezell and Jacqueline, and they don't have they they haven't heard from their about their children in five years. 
Yeah, I'm going to put this clip in here and let you guys take a look. Meantime, the case of Orrin and Orson West has prompted the birth mother of two unrelated children in Kern County's foster care system to step forward with concerns of her own. 17's Robert Price spoke to the parents of two other boys who they say are lost in the system. With the adoptive parents of young Orrin and Orson West now accused of their murder, Another set of parents whose children were put in the care of the same people are asking, what about their sons? Virginia Williams says she has not seen her sons, Guillermo and El Tero Para, ages 8 and 10, for five years. And at some point, she says, they were placed in the foster care of Trizel and Jacqueline West. That's the couple charged Wednesday in the alleged murders of Orin and Orson, ages 4 and 3 after more than a year of investigation that included combing the desert around the West's home in California City. By that time, DA Cynthia Zimmer says Orrin and Orson had already been dead for three months, which leaves Majenia Williams in anguish. Where are her boys? She and Israel Munoz, the boy's stepfather, say Kern County Child Protective Services isn't giving them any answers. We don't know where they are. I'm asking for proof of life. Proof of life, a phrase usually associated with kidnapping. Williams says a court official told her, in confidence, that her son's initial foster care placement was with Trezell and Jacqueline West, and that scares her. Been there six years now. They were adopted all out in 2018 to the West. Uh -huh. And then from there, I've seen and heard nothing from them. Kern County Human Services tells 17 News they can't comment on any aspect of Williams' story. Munoz says the whole system is unfair. It's breathtaking, but that's how CPS does things. CPS will come in your house, they break up families, they don't need to be broken up. Yeah. They, and then they give these kids away like they're puppies. I mean, where's, the, where's our constitutional rights? Williams says the situation is part of a bigger issue, helplessness born of multi-generational incarceration. She says she was raised as a ward of the Los Angeles County court system from the age of two. She has been to prison herself, and she says one of her sons, raised largely in foster care, has developmental issues that she fears will impact his life. And the chain continues. My father and my mother went to jail for prison, yeah. for murder. And I've lived with my grandma. Yeah. Being that I am awarded to the court, every child that I have, by law, they have the right to take. Yeah. Yeah. Because I am, I am a state baby. And this is the flaw that we should fix today. Because just because we are victims and, and we had no mothers, that, has, that should not hold above our head. Guillermo and El Tero Para, where are you? It's a simple question their birth mother would like an answer to. In Bakersfield, Robert Price, 17 News. Did I see that? Um, and this is, this is the family court um, in California. The family court does not care about black people. The family court in California, um, they harm black people. And it's acceptable. And um, if you might want to judge the parents, um, the biological parents, maybe feel like they didn't fight hard enough or whatever you might think. Because I'm a parent. I love my children. And the first thing I would think was like, why you let them take your kids? Why you didn't fight? I'm a victim of the hate crime. I'm a victim of a hate crime by the state of California. And it began, it began in the family court. And I'm doing these videos because I'm shining a light on what happens to black people. And I'm asking you to please subscribe to my channel. Please watch these videos. Please comment on these videos. I ultimately plan to use these videos to get legislation, legislative protection of black people. And again, you know, I, I, I don't wanna make this video too long. I wanna like briefly talk to you about my experience. Um, when we talk about uh, something happened to the little boy's um, leg, um, my children went to kinder care. My daughter, when she was younger, she went to kinder care. Mm, she was under a year because I didn't, I didn't um, go back to work till I believe she was six months. I kept putting it off. And I wasn't really comfortable living with my children with um, anyone else. And I, I, um, I, she was going to kinder care, and I think we were paying a lot of money. We were paying between four and six hundred dollars a week or something, or a month or something. I don't remember it was so long ago because my, my daughter's an adult now. But um, one time I noticed that something happened with her wrist. Even when she would try to 
stand up or whatever, that her wish was harmed, was hurt. And I would touch it and move it and she felt, you know, little babies under one can't talk, okay? But parents and mom knows that we pay attention and we know when something's wrong with our children. And I took my child to the hospital um, when I was younger, y'all. And I kind of showed my ass because I was like, what's going on with my daughter? Um, we ended up taking her out of this daycare. But the point that I'm making is that something happened to my daughter's arm, her wrist, because I was a working mom and I didn't know what happened. Okay, if you know my story, you know my life, you know my background, you might know why um, the doctor didn't feel like getting CPS involved. If you know who I am, why I'm here, and who I partnered with, huh? Okay, because what I'm what I'm recognizing is that could have happened to me. Okay, and I'm doing this reunite Sandy speaks, and I'm documenting these atrocities being done to black people because it's my purpose to create change and I cannot do it alone please subscribe to my channel please comment on my channel please like my videos because I want other black people to get involved in my journey and to help me um and I don't want to get, I, I tend to make these videos too long because I get, <laughs> I get real personal and um, I'm a cancer. So I'm very emotional feeling when seeing, tell you what I'm feeling and what I'm thinking. Um, but I want to maintain your attention. I want you to be aware. And my, my primary purpose is for you to subscribe to my channel, pay attention, share my videos, let other black people out there know that I'm doing the work. I'm not just talking about arson and Orlin just to, 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 to make a YouTube video. I want to show you what's happening to little black boys and little black girls. Um, I am going to also do a focus on CPS. As I told you since the beginning, I am going to grow and I'm going to get better. I say this and I'm, I maybe I shouldn't say it as frequently as I do because I just want you to know I am depressed. I am suffering from depression and anxiety because I'm a victim of a hate crime by the state of California that began in the family court. Okay? And they're not going to stop harming us until we get together and we cohesively explain you know express to them to show them that you can't keep bringing us harm do you understand orson and arlen are no longer on earth we don't know where they are two other little boys are missing and they they haven't seen or heard from their kids in five years and you might think and to, to i'm i you know what i don't want to like sing my praises about how i am as a parent my greatest accomplishment is my children Okay, so if you're a black person and you're watching these videos and you're saying, oh, this is happening to people whose kids were born and were people who are in criminal activity, um, less desirable, impoverished black people, uneducated black people, this continues and it, and it festers because of how we are treated. We are a product of our condition. And some of us are not faring as well as others okay i continue because i am college educated i'm tenacious i have a great ability to think critically but i'm suffering because the state of california brought me great harm because i was born black and i want you to care about me i want you to care that this happened to me because i'm black I want you to imagine that you are a working mom and you work, you know, because I, I I was married, but I work, I was a working mom too. Before I, um, I got married, I was a single mom. My son's not the guy I married's child. So I know what it is to have to work, put food on the table. And moms, we get tired. These two boys were taken from the mother, placed in a in care of people who uh, allegedly murdered them and this is, we see this constantly with black people and so the only way it's going to stop y'all 
is we make it stop. I'm trying to pull in your heartstrings and think these two little boys could have been your boys. Easily. You out working, doing stuff, and then you come home and you're like, damn, what's up wrong with your leg? What's going on with your leg? That's what happened with my daughter and her arm. I said, wait a minute. And I was young, y'all. I'm not going to lie. I showed my ass. I was in the hospital like, what's going on with my baby? I was there. I'm older and a little bit more um, relaxed and a little more reserved and got a little bit more <laughs> control of my emotions. But I think she was holding her bottle. I can't remember, but I remember saying something's wrong with her arm. Like, what? what's wrong with her arm? And I took her to the hospital. But for who I married... My, they could have took her from me. You understand what I'm saying? If y'all understand why I'm here and, and the purpose of Reunite Sandy Speaks and, and what led me here. They could have took my child from me, placed my child in a, an adoptive home that with people who um could care less. Who was there for the check. I have to do my investigation about um foster care versus adoptive. Um environment because I believe it's motivated by money and if we know our kids are at risk of being harmed because of greed in this country we have to protect ours I know that you're working I know that you have your own stuff I get it but I'm just asking you to please subscribe to my videos when you have the time see my watch my videos comment on my videos help me this is the beginning, and I'm saying the foundation and the groundwork for liberation of black people. We need additional protection under the law. There needs to be an update to the 14th Amendment. I'm not going to make this video much longer, but as I go on, I'm going to make other videos about CPS, and the correlation is going to be what, what we're going to look at is in the case of when it's black children versus white children. We're not hearing about little white kids getting going missing for days, months, years, and no one knowing. And when that does happen, it's a whole, they, they follow it and they talk about the story ad nauseum for years. But I live in California. I'm miles from where Arson and Erlen were, were, were taken. And I found out by this, by a young black um, civil rights activist on Twitter. Why isn't it all over the news that these two young black boys' babies are missing? You can't expect them to care about ours if we don't care about our own. At any rate, you guys, listen. I'm a 20th. This is Reunite Sandy Speaks. Y'all come fuck with me. Plus in our homes and fabricating and hiding uh, Well we had Sandra Blands and Trayvon Martins what? If when you kill us your family was a target If your children was orphans uh, Will you have compassion the next time you approach us Yeah we fed up, uh, this is built up uh, Your city up in smoke, homeboy we had enough And I ain't tasting riots of violence, heighten the climate I'm saying you smack me, I'm punching you in your iris Retaliation is prescribed, in both Bible and Quran In the matter of the slang, see an eye for an eye, especially if the Justice Department do not complain.